Okay, hello there. It's time to review a little bit about uh, speech, speech, sounds. We've got the uh, uh, we got the ooh, the uh, and the uh. Okay, so um, up here I have coup, right? If someone uh, takes over a country, usually the military is involved, then it's a coup, right? But I could also have a, a, a bird that coo, coos, right? A, a, pigeon, a pigeon or something. And then yesterday, that bird cooed, right? Cooed. That's different than they could. They could coo. Uh, they could have cooed yesterday, okay? Um, but if it was a cow, it would uh, be chewing its cud, right? So coo, could, cooed, yesterday, could, cud. And so they're similar sounds, but you should be able to separate them out in this little chart. I think it helps a little bit. Uh, let's go to moo, <coughs> right? The, the animal that chews its cud is going to say moo. Uh, and it mood, and it, has, it maybe it's in a good mood, right? Okay. Uh, so moo and mood, and then mud. I don't know what mud mean. Uh, mud is I don't have a word for that. And then I have um, mud, mud, mutter, muddle. Okay. I have. Uh, Shoe, your shoe, or I could shoo you away. So I was shooed away yesterday, or the horse was shooed yesterday. And uh, you should, should, you could, would, should uh, wear a hood, <laughs> uh, hood, okay, uh, if, if you go into the hut uh, and then shut the door, uh, door. Dur, not dur, door. <clears throat> okay, so I have shoe, should, should, and shudder. Right? Shut, shudder, should, uh, and ooh. And this is the confusing part because a lot of words are spelled with o o, and sometimes the o o is an oo, as in hoot, and moo and mood and sometimes the oo is an u uh, as in hood and wood and uh, good food right so you have the phrase um, you have food and you have uh, good this is a good test for people from other countries. You know, you spell out the, the phrase good food, and you ask them to say that. If they say good food, or do they say good food? Um, probably they'll say one or the other. But if they've got better control of English, they'll say good food, not, uh, uh, sorry for me to do this, uh, good fud. Not fud, fud. Good Food. I know, they're kind of close, but you should be able to find a difference. And if you think about it, if, if it's not an oo or an uh, then it's probably an uh. And that's why uh has the side down movement, because it's so common. If you see the hand move down, you know it's an uh. Oh, it's an uh. It's a schwa sound. It's this filler sound that happens all the time. And it's, just, it's the leftover sound for, for English. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so what? Right? Uh, you would expect that to be what? What? Or what? But it's an uh. All right? Uh, so sometimes it doesn't spell right, but it's still an uh sound. Okay, that's my ooh, ooh, uh, uh reinforcement. And one other thing is the i and the e when it's the final sound. You have a, are you... Happy or are you happy? Well, I'm in between. I'm a, I'm happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm happy. We don't have a sound. For, that that's an in between sound. It's in between an e and an i. 
and it was decided they decided not to have a separate queue for that in between sound. Why? Because it's not really that important. You can cue it either way, and it really is not going to mess up your literacy. But we recommend that if it's not an emphatic E, as in somebody with an accent who says, I am so happy to meet you, right? I'm happy. I can cue happy, and then I use happy for the normal situations. <clears throat> That's the idea. So if it's not emphatic, then we cue the in-between sound and the unstressed sound, both of those sounds. They're two different sounds, but we'll cue them both at the same place, the i, so that I reserve the e for when it's em emphasized, sometimes in music and um, most of the time with accents and things like that. But the official rules from the National Cued Speech Association is that um, you can go ahead and cue it as an E. If you're hearing it as an E, you should cue it as an E. And I'm teaching you to try to hear the difference. That it's not an E, it's not an I, it's in between. And therefore we cue it with the I, the unstressed version, so that we reserve the stress when we need it. Okay, I've said that two or three times now. I think it's enough. And the last one is the other example of a uh, sound that's in between. And that's called the flap. And the flap is not a T and it's not a D, it's a in between. So if I'm talking about a ladder, or if I'm talking about the latter day uh, saints, I might say exactly the same uh, speech sounds. But one I write as latter, let's put those up here, boop, 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 boop. latter, and the other one is ladder. In this situation, I'm, I, I teach you to cue following the, um, the spelling. So if you mean the word that has the T's, I will cue the flap sound as a T, right, latter. If, now, if I cue it that way, I'm more likely to say it as latter, which is not a flap, and that is a full T sound because there's that breath of air. If I say ladder, which I just did, or I say ladder, la ladder, la la <laughs> ladder, it's hard for me to hit the flap when I'm cueing because it pulls me to one side or the other. So if you're if you're hearing a flap and it could be either way, then you're fine. You don't know which way it is. You choose whichever one makes the most sense at the moment. If you know what the word is and how to spell it, then we cue following the spell the uh, not well the pronunciation but the spelling. Um, and basically, it doesn't make that big of a difference because it's not that often that it happens. But that's another example of. Technically, it's not technical. Um, it's not exactly a d. It's not exactly a t. It's in between those two sounds. It's a little bit of both. What's the difference between those two? T is voiceless. D is voiced. And those have voiced sounds on either side. Okay, so ladder and latter. Do I turn the voice off? Or is it still flowing through the whole thing? And sometimes it's a little bit in between. It's like we got it quiet, but it was still there. Well, that's flap. Ladder. Ladder. Was it a clear duh? Was it a clear t? It wasn't a clear t. It was almost a d. So I, what's the sentence? <coughs> Get the ladder. We'll use it to fix the cross on top of the latter day saints uh, temple there you go that's it for now uh, keep those questions coming and I will have some instructions on how not to follow exactly the Q chart when you're doing your um, ah uh, uh, I and um, ois that the forward movement is only for emphasis. Well, let's just do it right now. So if I'm going to say I, 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 it's a side, for, a side to throat, side to throat, side to throat. I don't come forward unless I'm saying I want that. Or oi, oi, ve, oi, ve, 
oi if it's just a quick beginning sound to the final sound, oi. If it's an emphasis, oi, I'll go to oh, sustained here for a while before I hit this, then it would come forward. If I have an ah, sustained ah, uh, before I come here, I want my uh, paper, you know, but I want my MTV. I'm just gonna be, see? Sometimes it's me too. Okay, so, because uh, I don't see your cueing until later on, uh, the emphasis is on cue reading, and if you're reading me correctly, you should be getting the cues pretty consistently, copy what I'm doing, but that's one of the things that you might misunderstand from the cue chart, is that the um, diphthongs that have the side forward movement don't actually move forward in the diphthong. We'll talk about uh, hand placement being a five at the end of the diphthongs on another one. Time to time to go play play and practice. See you on the next one. Bye bye.